Guys, recently a photographer reached out to me via email and said, you need to photograph me. Now, that bravado has led to a fantastic interview, which I'm going to share with you today. So if you want to see the wonderful work of Cy Melba, a fashion photographer working in London, and find out how to get a model wearing a designer dress to lie down in a horse trough, then you are in for a rare treat today. All right. Okay. So how's it, how's it guys? Today we've got Sai Melba with us. He is a fashion photographer based in London and he's going to talk us through, you know, his life, his transition from, was it motorsport, I believe, into, yeah. into uh, fashion photography and uh, also, and you lecture in fashion photography as well. So, <laughs> so lots to, to share, I think, with you. So, so welcome, Sai, to, to this inaugural chat. I think with some, you know, photographers. And do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself? You know, how did you get started? Yeah, for sure. Um, so first of all, I have to say, lucky brew for uh, how's it going to uh, reply <laughs> to know. you. So, um, yeah, so I'm a uh, so I'm a late bloomer in fashion photography. I'm a I'm a, a motorsport journalist originally. I'm a journalist by training and um start uh started in motorcycle magazines and then went on to launch my own motorcycle magazine and then from there did that for successfully for 20 odd years sold the magazine and then thought right what do i do now so i i, I i'd always been involved in photography with the with uh the magazine and um so i thought well you know that's my my passion that's the thing i really want to earn my living from so um why not pick up the camera and um, use it to, to earn my living? So, uh, and the switch to fashion obviously is kind of a, a you know big change from shooting uh, motorcycles and and motorsport and all that sort of thing. And it was just a, I guess it was something that I really wanted to try, and you know, um, a new challenge, something I was interested in. And it was a uh, a change from shooting people whizzing past you at 100 miles an hour to people standing there, you know, um, and you can see their faces. They don't, they're not wearing crash helmets. And the, the whole thing is really a bit more uh, kind of uh, personable, if that's the right word. Yeah, it sounds like. So do, do you have any formal training or is it your self-taught? All self-taught, yeah. yeah. And, and was, this, was this something that, that was from childhood or is it something you sort of only came into like your teens or your... your early no, so... Well, I mean, I first kind of picked up one of those point and shoot cameras that we used to have back then, um, you know, when I was six or seven, I think. And we always had like a, you know, Polaroids or something around the house. And, and I, you know, I was fascinated by photography. And, um, and I, but I got my first uh, SLR, as they were then, film SLR, when I was 17, on my 17th birthday pleaded for for a, a canon camera which um uh, my parents bought me and um went from there really <clears throat> developed my own film shot black and white um and and just enjoyed the whole process of composing the image shooting the image and and kind of creating the artwork Oh, fantastic yeah i also cut my teeth on on canon cameras <laughs> and it's been a, a lifelong thing I, I can't pull myself away from any of the 35 mil format and you you obviously because you lecture in photography or, or i think uh, you say fashion photography uh, yeah specifically that you've got some ideas and uh, you know that and some some points of view that have grown up because how long have you been taking photographs now for professionally uh, well, profes uh, professionally, I guess you'd have to include my magazine work because I've yeah. shot a lot of covers for magazines. So um, uh, best part of 30 years. I would say. 30 years. So, you know, you build up an idea, you get you you see things come and go. Yeah. And previously when we were talking, you mentioned that there were sort of misconceptions and ideas within photography that you wanted to address or at least, you know, give, give your viewpoints on. And and the first one that you came up with was was sharpness, and I think you know this is always a hot button topic in photography. Is is what is sharpness about? And you you very kindly supplied some images, which I'm just going to bring up on on screen here to you know illustrate your your points. You know, so what what is it about sharpness? Do you think that that photographers sort of get wrong? 
So I, th- I, I don't think photographers get sharpness wrong overall. What, my point really, Alex, is, a, is that I think sharpness as a concept is overrated. I think you can have great imagery without simply pursuing um, ultimate sharpness. And, you know, the, 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 the better the lenses get, the sharper they get. And um, and I just think sharpness is overrated. Some of, you know, I'm not saying, of course, that we don't want to have sharp imagery. Of course we do. Um, what I am saying, though, is that that there is also plenty of great imagery that that doesn't quite hit focus. It you know, and yet, or it's a, it captures a sort of a fleeting moment. And those images are are some of the best images. I always think. And so I sort of say, you know, uh, I mean, I like to say to students, you know, step away from the clarity slider. Just leave that that little button alone, that slider. Just, just worry more about, uh, you know, creating a mood and an image rather than making sure that everything is exactly in focus. You know, uh, modern cameras, obviously, with the autofocus and you know, pinpoint accuracy on the eyes. It's all great. But sometimes you want to shoot from the hip. The camera, uh, you know, isn't focusing on exactly the right point. And I, you can still create great images. That the that image, the last image, just going back mm-hmm. one, you went, this is, this is an out of focus shot. It's a manually focused, you know, shot on film on a manually focused camera. And I remember this, this shot, uh, I, I'd focused in on her and then she turned towards me and I went, click to to grab the shot yeah and the shot is i think it's beautiful even though it's not in focus it just has a, an element of a little bit of movement to it a little bit of real life to it and it's you know it, it lets you breathe a little bit more you don't have to have you know you don't have to worry too much about the, the you know it clearly isn't in focus you can just go ah oh, okay <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's interesting looking at this this image because there's a couple here. I, th- I think this this young lady as well, yeah. you know, striding down the street. And while you were talking about feeling and you know, like a mood, I think it was like a vibe of the kind of thing. This this particular photograph is on 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 the screen. And really, you know, when I look at this, it's it's really it's just a trailing foot and the background is sharp, for want of a better yeah. word. And everything else is is in movement. And much like you mentioned with this lady here, she's looking over her shoulder and it is soft. And depending obviously on how you, what screen you view these is going to be sharper or softer, but yeah, it, it is, but it's not wildly out of focus. And it's interesting that I kind of look at it and, and think, yeah, like camera clubby kind of stuff. Right. So this is more like, you know, like her profile is, you know, her nose is breaking her profile and her mm. lips. So these are all checkbox exercises. I'll, I'll hold my hand up and say that feels like it. But your perspective as, 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 as a working professional, right, who takes pictures and sells in magazines and they get published and things, do people really care about that sort of thing in, for want of a better word, the real world? No. It, it, you know, in short, next question. <laughs> no, I think, <laughs> yeah. you know, of course, you know, you want to try and to nail the focus and, and that's the idea. But but really what we're trying to convey in fashion photography is much more about a mood and 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 focusing would come way down the list. I, I don't mean focusing, but I mean, you know, absolutely nailing focus mm. would come absolutely way down the list, you know, uh, behind what, what it is we're trying to portray. Um, like I say, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that all my shots are <laughs> soft. I hope not anyway. <laughs> um, for you, but, uh, but you know, uh, what I am saying is don't discount them and don't chase, um, you know, ultimate sharpness because it, 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 it's a lost cause. It's, it's not the most important element to me in a fashion photograph. And, uh, and I'll, I'll give you a, you know, I'll let you in on a little secret is that, um, a lot of pros will actually soften off an image after they've shot it. And I don't mean on the clarity slider, you know, yes, maybe a bit of that, but also they'll go into Photoshop and they'll blur it ever so slightly, you know, uh, two or three pixels, maybe a bit less. And just so there's a little element of movement that just feels more human about an image. 
So, uh, you know, the, and I know there's a difference between, you know, sharpness and blur and all those sorts of things. But I suppose I, I'm kind of grouping it all together and saying, you know, for some people, I think they they chase uh, uh, pin sharp imagery. And actually, I think there's more to a shot than just that. Wow, that's yeah, very profound. <laughs> I like, I like <laughs> that. There's, yeah, the idea that sharpness isn't the be all and end all of, of everything. It isn't, and I think the sorry to no, no. go back to it, but I think the you know the to some degree it's in the interest of the of the camera manufact manufacturers to sell us sharper and sharper lenses and stuff, and and really the, we don't you know the human eye doesn't really see it in quite that sort of detail, and so I, I fi find it a little bit exhausting every time I look at people's images, especially if they've been over sharpened, and you know sometimes I just want an image to you know just relax a little bit and let it breathe i like that let let it breathe to say you you mentioned when we were talking you know earlier off of camera about you know sort of getting rid of stereotypes and imagine working in fashion photography that things do move forward and and you know how have you managed to stay current or, or kind of change with the times almost. So, so it's a it's a really good question, and I think the 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 point, the sort of second point I wanted to make really was to was when you're shooting fashion, you know, ditch the stereotype. Don't you know you you're working with a model, male or female, and you need to engage with that model. You need to let them use their brain, form a connection with that model, and and let them you know help create an image so that so that we're not uh, uh you know just just shooting a model uh who we position to do this or to do that what we actually want to do is is to work alongside the model and and you know allow them to express themselves in a way that isn't uh old-fashioned so um Sorry, just to interrupt there how would you do that how do you go about creating an environment where say this gentleman here for example feels comfortable you know just like playing around with a tree or something how much direction do you give people well obviously i am giving them quite a bit of direction because uh, you know i sometimes i have an idea in my head of what what i'm looking for but but what i'm really trying to say is i'm not i'm not telling them to to make specific movements what what i'm really saying to them is to is what you know what would you do here what can you do here what's your you know how would you like to 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 pose what you know what what is your strengths and weaknesses in terms of um what, you know can you jump on the tree can you hang off the tree what yeah. would you do so i'm so i'm actively engaging with the model so that they uh contribute to to creating a shot and and at the same time, uh, when I say you know ditch the stereotypes, avoid the stereotypes, is is avoiding shooting women in particular as as objects, you know, arched back and you know this that the very old fashioned sort of look, uh, you, you know, we we just want to avoid that now, and we want to to um, create with the model to produce interesting shapes and you know an amazing image. Right. So that raises a, a question, you know, you said about working with the model. And for a lot of people who are watching this, they're not really going to be working with, for want of a better word, a professional model. So I'd imagine it's slightly easier when, you know, you have somebody who's used to being photographed and, and they kind of will lean into it and, and bring a lot of their own. But what advice would you give to somebody who wanted to break free of that stereotypical sort of that's, you know, posing? And and engage in a more fluid sort of way of, of photographing with somebody. I think the I mean I mean I think respect is key. I think I think one has to respect the model and and be friendly and um, you know remember boundaries and you know and and basically kind of. Uh, make friends with the model and put them at ease and let them be themselves. And that, that is the best advice I could give to anyone. It, you know, obviously if they start making 
you know, sort of weird, weird shapes that it's not going to work. That's fine. Then you direct them in a way that you want to to direct them and help them. But I, but I think the the crucial thing is the models have to know that they're part of the creative process, and they also have to um, feel comfortable. and And it's only when they're really comfortable that that you will get great work out of them. So um, respect. And friendliness are absolutely key to respect. respect. There you go. You see that that's all you need: respect and friendliness. And, and what a fantastic piece of advice! Because there are so many, you know, books as we all know, and, and places you can learn about photography, and yet these kind of things are so rarely addressed. That I think that's it's a huge, huge, um, you know, sort of insight into how you know people work with each other yeah. and and how it does it does make your photographs feel a little bit more real the full yeah i mean I, I i i well thanks for saying that i i, I hope so you know i th i think um i think that really you know people are uh, people are just great fun to photograph and and you know and it's capturing that that element of them that little bit of personality that shines through in a photograph and i know it sounds a bit cliche but it's it's really true and it's that if you can just manage to put them at ease let them be themselves and and you know the other thing is often they're great at kind of um creating a great shape that you might not have in your head and um it's only by allowing them you know fr free reign to do that that you actually get to an amazing result yeah that's that's fantastic now i have noticed obviously a lot of in fact all the images we've looked at are location images yeah. and and i i particularly you know my I, i've spent most of my life stuck inside a studio so i, I like the freedom of the idea of going out with with somebody you know <laughs> photographing them in, in situ in, in the, because it, it does lend a lot more to the session yeah. And you you wanted I think you know you to talk about this because it just it feels like it's it's a it's a thing that people tend to overlook in how much it can influence the feel and the, the mood of the work. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I love shooting on location. You know, I also have to shoot studio, but I love location shoots. And and to me, you know, I, I, I view locations as my friend. I you know I I love the all the stuff that's going on in the background whatever it is and i'm always looking for for locations and and not not you know um kind of necessarily great locations just interesting locations so this this picture for instance is shot in the obviously in a car park of a, was it a university car park or something we're, we're gonna play car park bingo because <laughs> one of my favorite locations to, to take pictures of the car park <laughs> yeah because it's look it's brutalist and it's you know there's concrete and it's kind of looks like a big cavern or something and there's a bar going across you know yeah. going across the image I, I love it it's it's really casually shot um the model is is slightly oddly cropped which i like the background isn't square which i like there's light coming in from one side it's you know um here I am critiquing my own photo, going, "Oh, I love this," but I mean, of course, I've sent you the photos that I actually look. look the, on. It's interesting that you know there's a bit of, I, I would say, a hint of of not aggression from the model, but a kind of like a little bit of attitude. Yeah. And do I you mean, think I, the model has pulled that from the environment? You know, I, I don't. I'm, just, uh, you know, in. I don't think that it's the environment really. I think if she's a really good model, she knows her angles. <laughs> that, okay. You know, she, she's got this kind of short hair and 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 great look, which is, uh, and, you know, and she's she's standing there in a jacket and and no top, so she's, you know, she's owning that image. Yeah, she she is empowered by that. She's in a great. Yeah, and. You know, and she's she's looking down at me. You know, I'm shooting from a lower angle, and it, and the whole thing just just screams empowerment from my. It point. does. It's a it's a it's a very. Yeah. It's I I really like like the photograph. Thanks. And then this is a totally different sort of thing. This is this is very bright and wow, it's like punching yeah, in the face. And I mean, you know, here here we are. This is this is just on the streets of London. It's a great door. I clocked the door before we did the shoot, and wouldn't you know it, the you know 
one of the outfits was was exactly the same color so yeah. so we then we went and grabbed some stools we borrowed those from a cafe nearby cafe yeah. and um you know i made sure to get the obviously the sh the, the the colorful door and the color of the of the model's clothes and the stools are just kind of you know thrown in there almost. yeah it is so, but, but i mean you know th this is this is the thing that i love about location photography is you know that it's and it's not just like a great door like that i mean you, uh, other shots that i that i of mine will have rubbish bags and you know i don't know clutter and stuff i don't move anything out of the way i love to shoot with all the trappings of life that going on all around me okay and, and you know that's part of of um uh, you know what we see every day and, and my work is very much um in in that vein so this is a this is a shot of um it's one of those kind of uh i don't know what it is a sort of two three hundred year old two hundred year old i would think uh metropolitan horse trough or something um this is right by regent's park yeah and model in a gucci suit um great pose and again really just owning the look and uh, <laughs> I, I love that yeah she's just she's in a gucci suit and it's like just go and lay in that trough yeah just go and lay in that trough and it's wet you can see it's wet and the leaves are wet and, yeah yeah and, you know but, but, but that's interesting you know when when i look at this and going back to what you were talking about you know about the posing and, and getting over stereotypes and things of that nature how does this kind of photograph this pose happen because it seems to me that you know there's a big leap than going from you're wearing a Gucci suit and you're in this environment to would it just what would happen if you lay in that thing? <laughs> is is that kind of is that the thought process? Yeah, I mean, again, I'd, I'd kind of clocked this and I, I knew that the shot was in there. And I, I because it's shot on film, um, I, I think I probably took I, I remember I probably took six or seven images there. Not all of them worked, funnily enough. The ones which had her shoes in and everything, just a, she was just a bit too far away and it didn't quite, you know. The look wasn't right, um, but but this she you know going back to her pose and everything. This is a pose that she came up with. It's she's engaged with the camera. She's looking at the camera. Although I don't always like the models looking at the camera. In that particular instance, it just works right. She's laying there, kind of you know, casually as if she does this every single day, which she probably does as a working model. Right. But, you know, but look at look here. I am. I've I bought this Gucci suit, you know, and and I'm just gonna relax. And and those are just the the sort of images that I love. There, there's you know it's there, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just it just is. There is yeah. These are this is this is South Bank. Um, yeah. You know, this is one of the busiest places in London. South Bank in London. You can actually see St Paul's Cathedral just a little bit. In yeah, the I say it's just peaking there in the drizzle. <laughs> yeah, coming out of the mist and and freezing cold day rain. You can see it's dry where she's standing, but if you look just beside her, it's yeah, pouring with rain. This. And we dressed her in a swimsuit because of the rain and it's the river and we, it just felt right. And so, again, you know, so talking about backgrounds, this, again, this is just a, a nice shape that sort of worked with the image. And, the, the, you know, there's an old London in the background. And I, I just I've walked that past there, you know, a million times and, and not really seen it as a as a background for a shoot. But it, it works. But that, that, that raises another question I wanted to ask you is when you, because you're, you're based in London and, and I'm going to make an assumption that the majority of your shoots are in London. Most occur through yeah. in London. Do you, do you keep like a mental note of <laughs> things where you go, this, I, this would be kind of cool? You know, I, so. I definitely do that. And I, you know, I snap a few images with my, with my iPhone and stuff, but often it's also done on the day. If you just go back to that last image, this, I found this image on the day. I had the shoot arranged with this model. This is a building site. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the builders obviously said you can't come in into the site without hard hats and stuff, but you can stand in the entrance of the door. And, I, you know, you've got the natural light coming in from one side, these old stairs. It's just, again, for me, it was just one of those places that worked. I can see the, the 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 juxtaposition between like the kind of the more clean of his of the outfit and stuff, yeah. and then yeah, those stairs. I'm, I'm instantly drawn to that right because it they look like some of the stairs in my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> living in an old house, but yeah, beautiful. Yeah, sort of just yeah, being aware of of the possibility. 
for photography, you know, for, 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 for locations? Oh, for sure. I mean, and, you know, again, you know, uh, love uh, lovely location but um and in this case pre-scouted and stuff but we didn't you know we hadn't really sorted this shot it, I, I again i just felt that the the shape of the model and the way the rock stuck up it just kind of worked together yeah. and um but but you know although that's a great location in, in the uk um on, uh, in, down in cornwall it's um you know I actually love shooting at locations that I haven't pre-scouted and uh, I just turn up and go, yeah, okay, this will work. This is a, um, a an example of that. Uh, it, it's a market in, in central London. Um, i trying to think where it is, Leather Lane or somewhere. And, you know, we just turned up at, after the market had finished, but before they'd cleared away the market uh, stalls and posed the model in there. And sure, we get, you know, there's a few people kind of come up to us and say, can we help or can we do this? Or can we, you know, I moved the the big orange table t- so that it worked as a backdrop. And Was, and was that orange of- table originally in the shot? So like so it was originally the model and then think, well, we need to kind of maybe separate it out somehow. And you just- No, so the orange table was, you know, was actually flat and we we propped it up and it just works as one of those. Because it's, of- it's, it is a remarkable image. Because yeah. it's you know in one regard it feels like a very studio kind of photograph because mm. if you if you discard all the, you know the the the, the um, you know the environment it's got that sort of studio y kind of feel with the light and everything and yet then it also has you know the, some palettes and there's rubbish in the background you're talking about your, your things going on and <laughs> it, it's it just it, it it's yeah it's remarkable I'm sorry I don't have any more words to say about that and but it, I, I love I love it it just goes to show that you know you don't need grandiose environments no no absolutely not yeah, I'll be this is, crates. <laughs> I mean, literally this was only shot a few weeks ago literally walked around the corner there were these bread crates mm. i knew what the model was wearing obviously and i thought yeah it's just great we had him standing on the bread crates as well a bit later on mm. and you know th- those sorts of things they've got so much texture and mm. and it's also kind of i think it kind of contextualizes the image because it, it's not a studio shot. It's not a guy, you know, uh, showing off his muscles. He didn't know what he was going to be wearing or not wearing. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, there's something about it that just kind of says, uh, you know, we just turn up, that those were there, and let's shoot the image. Yeah. Okay, this is also... This, and I included this, I included this shot because it's really, you know, the rubbish bag... Um, <laughs> I, I, the, the assistant sort of dived in and removed the rubbish bag and I said no no put it back it's it, you know it's exactly where it was and and you know the the, the background again it's not a clean background of shops and bikes and a, you know you can see I'm shooting with you know quite a depth of field there so I haven't I haven't blurred out the background um I like it it's real life it's it's a street in London now you kind of get you know you said that I like it right and I'm interested, do you ever get any pushback from magazines or, you know, sort of people who sort of commission images or what have you going, ah, you, you and your rubbish bags? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever um, get that? Or do, have you set an expectation that if you hire Cy or Cy takes pictures, this is what you get? I mean, you know, look, of course, not everybody likes every image and, and yeah. you know, one's always supplying a lot more images and then they'll make, you know, that whether it's a client or whether it's a, a, um, a magazine or whatever they'll make a selection that the, you know they'll choose their selection and and not everybody gets it you know um but but then that is, that's the you know that is the beauty of photography is everybody has a different idea of what makes it a cool image i see that yes and and that is that's a, a great thing yeah so remember. i mean the tr- yeah. sorry to interrupt you the tree the the, the tree shot um I, yeah, I did just, just I'll bring back. it back up a second because <laughs> you say you say that as soon as I've taken. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're like, I'm sorry. Yep, the tree um, shot. I'm like, there we're among friends here. That's right? the tree shot. There we that's go. That's the tree shot. So the tree shot. I, I looked at the again. It's one of those things I walked past a number of times, and I thought, mm-hmm. you know, I've got to use that tree. It's kind of just a tree on the streets. Like you see, there's a kind of a toilet thing behind. Yeah, it. so I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. But then 
And actually, it was it was really hard for the model to climb up. She kept kind of slipping down the tree. And it, it's only, you know, her her the, the foot you see kind of closest to the corner of the frame is only, I don't know, two or three feet off the ground. But, yeah. but it's really slippery. And it's not as easy as it looked, but she did it. She got up there. And the image is just, you know, for me, it was just a great image. There, there. I, again, I like it. it it's, it's something again. You, I think, the yeah, lesson that certainly that that the people who are you know watching want to try their own approach to photography would would do well to to pick up on is that there does feel like you have a, a sense of freedom in regards to how you photograph and the way that you approach a shoot. And if that that's something that I, I hope you know a lot of people were getting from watching this, is that yeah, just, I I just do your thing, man. I wish I'd thought of that <laughs> because that's absolutely true. I think I do shoot with a lot of freedom, and I uh, and I don't constrain myself. Myself, and and I think that um, you know, that there are no, there are no wrong ways to do it. Not every shot is great, but but I don't you know I don't think uh, 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 I don't set out thinking this is wrong, this is wrong, you know, I or or I've got to shoot it this way, or you know. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. I have a lot of freedom when I shoot. The, 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 free, the freedom is the freedom is paramount. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So the, um, the it, with your tree image, that, you know, that's, there's a lot of things, you know, that tree was going off outside and, and the lady in the horse trough and, and what have you. There were, and you mentioned also about the original picture in the car park, that the cropping's all a little bit, just ever so you know just you know it's, there's bits hanging off there and yep. you've, you've you've talking about the freedom to break the frame yeah which i, I think feels this is going to feel like it's something that certainly from my own perspective you know when i was starting out in photography you were told there were certain things that you had to do you know the subject needs to be the sun behind you and yep. and include everything right and um uh, of the subject and of course that's not the case at all is it um well i mean you know uh, you know there's no rights and no wrongs and, I, and i'm certainly not holding up my photography as as better than everyone else's or anyone else's actually but um but th th this particular picture and i've seen uh, other photographers who who've shot a similar sort of shot but with a horse's head cropped which actually are I really like. I, I wish I'd done that on that shot as well. And, and no, literally, and you sort of see this kind of headless horse, and it mm -hmm. and it it's not the most obvious shot. I mean, I I cropped the horse. Mm -hmm. I, I could have just step back a little bit and got the horse in shot, but I didn't want it because we know what <laughs> we know what the back end of a horse looks like. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of <laughs> there. We don't need to actually see it to know that the horse has got hind legs. So um so in when I was working in magazines, we used to do, uh, you know, uh, we used to sort of cut out images um, where, you know, you take one image, you, you, you cut it out in Photoshop and you place it back onto the same image. And that way you can end up with um, uh, a model standing in front of a logo or something you know so the the masthead of the magazine or whatever it appears to be behind the model even though the model is standing in a in a location and you you know and i suppose what i'm trying to do is this is a, a version of that is it you know this guy's arm it is kind of coming out towards you we it, it, it brings you in to the image i think and and the idea of breaking the frame for me is to say you know don't frame everything perfectly let let the the photo you know let your mind create some of the image yeah. did did you find this was because uh, i'd imagine these days does it is this a, like an unconscious process that you you do now like this this particular image is that something you just kind of it just happens or do you have to still work at it uh that's a really good question alice and the, the truth is i have to work at it yeah. I have to actually, you know, when I'm looking through the camera, I actually have to move it away from from central because, uh, you know, uh, the it's so normal, isn't it, when we're looking through the camera to to try and centralize an image. And obviously, if you're using autofocus, which I wasn't on any of these shots, mm -hmm. the you know the, the the focus points generally start off in the middle, and okay, we can move them 
you know, to the edges. But, but you know, most shots are centered around the middle. And and I, I actually prefer images that aren't. Um, I don't. It's not so much a, a rule of thirds. This is this is really not. I mean, it's, of course, it is centered, but it, uh, I like the way the foot is cropped. And again, just another step back and I would have got it all in there but I don't want it all in there because I want to connect in some ways I want the model to be able to be stepping out of the photograph does that make sense it it, it does and I, and I think you know I'm often uh sort of talking about um the uh the impressionists yeah because photography yeah. was sort of getting going with the impressionists was it and and they would have things going out of the frame doing much similar you know with the horse and and what have you so taking their their cue from photography you know like the dogs here there's a head and a dog and then there's the yeah. backside of a dog <laughs> that it does make you kind of feel like there's more going on yeah rather than you talked about being drawn into the frame uh with with this gentleman and i kind of so see it from another perspective that they, it's kind of this this image has a bit of movement to it although it feels somewhat static because of his nature because of that arm yeah coming through there it feels a little bit more dynamic so it's yeah. interesting you know going back to your point about everybody kind of looks at the images sort of different ways i think um and you know and again as i say there's no rights and wrongs and and i also like images which you know where you stepped back but really, I, I guess what I was, I guess the point I'm really trying to make is that you you don't have to capture all of the image all of the time. Um, you can take a part of the image and leave some, you know, some negative space and and allow your brain to fill in some of those gaps. And that lets you engage with the image a bit more. Absolutely. I mean, this, this, this particular photograph, here, I really I love the lighting, that softness. Mm. you know the, the gauge you mentioned about the you know the, often having the models not look at you was it this that very shallow depth of field on this one yeah you know which which again lends itself to that sort of airy dreamy sort of nurse and i think if had you had the entire you know his entire head in the image then it loses some of the, i think what you you know like mystique almost yeah because yeah. we don't know what's what's other stuff. That's you know, it's a fascinating sort of thing, and I'm, I'm glad that you also, that you you find it uh, something you know that you have to kind of work at it because it yeah. does. It, it, I'm, it from my own perspective, I, I sometimes go, this feels unnatural, and you have to. It feels like I have to force it. But you know, if you don't, I mean, then you never get the picture. No, I, I think you. You know, I think you're always working at it, aren't you? Every every shot, you 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 you're drawing on your own experience. You're drawing on you know what you know what you know has has worked in the past and what and and also you you know creating new ideas so uh, so from my point of view I, I think um you know be experimental and um you know but, but don't be constrained here we come back to that thing again you know the freedom to shoot is that you know don't be constrained by the frame of of the image um you know let, let allow the the image to come out of the frame excellent advice let the, let that image live <laughs> live in the real world <laughs> like it's it's as a, as a lovely thing when i look at your images right although i'm not hugely familiar with with your body work i'm starting to get a feel for the psi style right the, you know the, the, that's the kind of look and, you, and you've got here that is that you know one of the pieces of advice is about owning a style of you know and so that's kind of leads into sort of two questions is one is how did you come to this because obviously these are hugely away from your motorsport days i'd imagine right sure. and how did you arrive at this stun how did you kind of know when you found it so um it's funny you said uh, other people of course say the same to me you know are uh, you know, that's your style. So I don't know what my style is. I have, I haven't a clue what my style is. Um, it's nice that people can recognize my work from, you know, I get a, a feel for my work from, from various images. Um, but, but I think the point really is uh, that, that I wanted to, to get across to people is to say, um, you know, we might take inspiration from other 
photographers. But at the end of the day, um, no one's going to hire you if you just create the same work as somebody else. They'll just go to somebody else. So um, it's important to be original and authentic. And it's really hard to be original and authentic these days because let's face it, it, you know, every single thing has been done. But you've got to put your own twist on things so that you create your own style. And um, like I said, I don't know exactly what my style is, but um, but uh, but I I guess we've covered some of it to, today, you know, in, in uh, allowing myself the freedom to to shoot um, what I want to shoot. And, you know, and and literally not, uh, you know, not taking another image and, uh, you know, and what or another person's image another photographer's style i want to create my own style and, and have the freedom to actually do that so um I, again i want i i would just encourage people to to experiment find out what works for you and you know and run with it don't don't get too um hung up on what other people are producing because at the end of the day um they'll they'll produce what they want to produce but you aren't them so so you know kind of be, become your own person and 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 own your own work basically that's as yeah I, I, that's it's so good advice i think you know it, to, to just be your own person and it's interesting that you say that you don't know your own style uh, and maybe this is why people tend to fall over themselves when they're trying to find a style is that ultimately it's not something that you can really define yeah it's, 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 we don't work in a checkbox sort of system here that you know people have looked at my work and they go well that's that's very clearly an alex photograph and you go well thank you but i didn't specifically shoot it in a specific way because that's my style i just right. photographed yeah. it and and so that is, is it is difficult to to find you know something that you kind of go well if i was to define my own images yeah they are this or that or something yeah it's a you know of course uh, you know the the beauty of photography is we 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 you know we never stop learning we you know and and our style will probably change over time and this and the other i, I should point out this one is is um an homage to uh, having said own your own style here's a <laughs> picture where this is an homage to a great um uh norman parkinson uh photographer on vogue uh in the 50s and 60s and yeah. um we wanted to recreate a modern version of that shot of his shot famous it's, shot um, um it's very dramatic isn't it yeah and um but 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 coming back to 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 yeah. owning your own style is you know what what is right and what is wrong uh it is down to you and it's down to you know how how you create your own image and and there's a there's a lot of um people who are really worried about whether they've got an image right but actually an image can be wrong and right at the same time then this is a classic case in point you know what no why would you put a tree in front of the clothes you're trying to to picture because you can. <laughs> and because it adds interest to it and yeah. yes you can't see some of the clothes and people go yeah that's typical fashion you know they they, they want to show you the clothes and then they don't actually show you the clothes yeah but it's all about the mood that that paints because it for, for, it, it questions you you're looking at it and you think what well, what why well, you know why did i put that <laughs> why did he put that tree right in front of the model because most people wouldn't do it so you know and it's not about being you know, you know, trying to do the opposite of what people would do. It's it's yeah. just about being a bit more playful. I mean, I think humour should come into. Yeah. There was there was an image here earlier that we were talking. And this did make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> this, this particular one of this, this you know this lady and there's a giant the bolt. bolt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And you kind of yeah, it was it, you know you, you sort of sit there and and that would be I think one of those things that you know why would you do that. Uh, I'm like, well, why not? Yeah, yeah. why not? You could almost I mean, imagine, you know, somebody sitting there going, ah, oh, this, but I can't photograph here, or I'd have to have her on this side or something. Yeah. Well, whereas you just kind of gone, yeah, 
you know, bolts here. The bolts here. I mean, obviously, I shot that deliberately. So, that, that, you know, well, one of the things is that you immediately see the bolt and it draws you into her face mm -hmm. and the eye and the makeup and and everything and the the you know the lines and all that sort of thing. But there's also some humour and and you know, it's like. Um, it's, it's, it's almost Frankenstein, isn't it? It's like there's a <laughs> bolt sticking out, you know. And and it just, again, it it's it's not taking your work too seriously. I mean, although it, you know, it wasn't a shot that I got home and thought, God, what's that bolt doing there? You know, I shot it knowing yeah. that the, the bolt is there. Uh, but it, but also because it makes the image isn't perfect. I I like the imperfection. The bolt is you know it sticks out of that piece of wood, so let's use it. So uh, again, it, it, it's it's another one of those ones where the you know the the location plays into your hands and and you, and you should use it. Fantastic! I lo I love this picture. Yeah, this this is absolutely gorgeous. It's it's on one hand it's very simple, you know, because it's it's it, there's not a huge amount going on, no. and it's got I, I, you know you talked about that tree earlier, you know, sort of, and and here we got I'd imagine some sort of pillar or something that's. Yeah. You know, cutting the frame vertically in half yeah and so on the one hand you've got all these pastels and on the other hand you've got that whatever people have done on the background there then that skateboard and you know the, the hair was that lovely red and just that, and then the hint of a cigarette <laughs> just yeah. you know just just in there it's it's gorgeous yeah i mean i i can't say too much more about that image i think i think it you're you're right it's a it is a pillar and the pillar obviously was painted in the same color. And I just saw the light, you know, the way the light was was reflecting off that pillar. If, 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 just for, for the sake of people who maybe maybe not familiar <clears throat> about how you actually do this, you know, put things close to the frame and and then, you know, have them blow like this. Can you just give them a very brief, you know, sort of outline of how you how you achieve this? So so often when there's something uh, you know this isn't metallic as it turns out but often something metallic um or or something you know that's closer closer to the camera it will it will pick up a a little bit of sunlight and i mean if it isn't picking up sunlight it it often this 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 process doesn't work as well um so it so it's really no you know the, the talk about photographers you know knowing about you know how to work with light and stuff but but i don't really see it on on that level all, all i do is i'm looking for you know if if i was to move that pillar or move around the image slightly and shoot it, it would still be a nice straight shot but the the thing that makes it interesting for me is that she's bisected by this the you know the pillar and it as you say it kind of chops off the 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 cigar she was smoking it's actually a cigar and um you know, and yeah, so I'm looking for these things all the time. I'm always looking for something, you know, something in the foreground that might add to the image or, uh, uh, you know, or actually interrupt the image, you know, in a way that that is contra to how, um, you know, a perfect image might be. So I'm looking for things that disrupt the image. Disrupt the image. Yeah. What? A, again, a great, a great bags, bags, bags of statement. Just, you know, Simon Melba, disrupt your images. <laughs> <laughs> love, it, it's that's what I'm what saying. Yeah, that kind of shadow depth of field where you got these things in in here. So they, you know, they're framing. Because often we talk about those things as framing elements, but you know, the, I, I think you've kind of looked at them as more of an active player in in the image you know? yeah i do i, I do um you know um some you know some t and and you, you know you can always find them with a location you never know what you're going to find but it's really just looking for the little bits that, that that will add interest to the image and as i say you know that if you go down onto the south bank you'll find these things with a big bolt sticking out and it's a matter of most people don't use them in their in their shots but i thought it was playful to use it so i, th I, th I think they're, they're, they're lovely now we have now a folder of, of your own of, of it just says sci and work <laughs> so this is you know just pictures i think these are kind of obviously just you know images that you you like and that you've sort of shared with do you have any advice 
to people who may want to either, you know, get into fashion photography that you would give them, you know, would say, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. you would... I, um, I think that, I think the, the first thing I would say is you, you, you know, um, you don't need to be technically gifted with the camera. Cameras are so good these days. You, you know, you, 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 you know, forget the technical stuff, albeit, you know, that's something that, that I'm sure interests you, Alex, and it, and it interests me, but, but the, the technical side of things, it, uh, you know, is not Im as important as just creating an image. And, and when it comes to fashion, I think, you know, just let your imagination go wild. You know, um, it, it, I, I'm, I'm always amazed by, um, by some of the creativity that I see in the students that I, you know, that mm -hmm. I, I teach fashion photography to. Some of them come up with the most amazing stuff. And, and you know, it, it's just really having, you know, having good ideas and, and, being prepared to to try them. Not not everything works, and you know. And unfortunately, when you're shooting on film, that's an expensive process. But, <laughs> but you know, it, but but you will often find something that you think, wow, yeah, that really does work. So so that's what I would say is, but you know, be creative and and don't limit yourself. Don't you know, limit you yourself. Try. That's how because it's easier said than done. Don't limit yourself. Is there is there something that you particularly, if you're having an off day, you just kind of go, I'm I'm not feeling it. Something's not quite good. Is there something that you do or that you suggest your students to get over that, that that you know somehow kind of just clear out the system and and get you back into a sort of a free flow of of photography? Well, I mean, I think you've nailed it there. You know, for free flow is is vital. You know, when you're in when you're in flow. You, you 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 know everything works doesn't it and everything feels easy the the these images you know this image for instance that uh, this is a lovely old country house which is you know beautiful um gr great big room sort of ballroom and this room and that room and and this was a kind of little boot room on the way to yeah. one of the other rooms where we were going to shoot and i just somehow it just worked for for me, it was you know there was just kind of cobwebs and stuff going on <laughs> in the background, and the light is, yeah. you know, I just love it. it I yeah. Um, but anyway, coming back to your point, how do I kind of get into flow? So it's a good question. I I don't know, but I do, I do think that 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 if you don't constrain yourself and if you let yourself um, try some of these things, breaking the frame and being a bit free with this and don't clear the rubbish away from the shot and stuff. You'll be amazed at, uh, at the images you can create because it doesn't, you don't then have to have, you know, perfect shooting conditions. So um, here's a, here's a shot where just toned the back, the, the, you know, the model is wearing those clothes, picks a background that's toned in mm. and, you know, it's, it, it, it's sort of inconsequential, but it, but it works. The you know the background is just a few dead plants, but actually it's it's the right tone and everything. So, um, who who do you take inspiration from? Because you mentioned Norman Parkinson earlier. Yeah. So, is there are there other people, both you know historical people or, or you know modern current working people who you just, you just kind of go wow every time you look at their work, there's something new that you got. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously uh, th th there are a lot of photographers I admire. I mean, Jürgen Teller's work I, I really love, um, or Carlos Clark, um, modern photographers, Campbell Addy, um, Alexander Saladragas, a photographer working in New York shooting on film, Campbell Addy shoots on film, um, Sarah Moon, um, I, I, you know, there are a lot of photographers whose work I admire and, and, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I think, how the hell they produce that image? You know, I mean, uh, it's, you know, I, I, I think, um, I think for me, I, I like photographers who, who create a vibe um, and, yeah. and, you know, uh, a feeling because, because, you know, people, if you if you're not coming from a fashion background, they assume that fashion is about shooting clothes, but it's not really about shooting clothes. It's about shooting 
a mood and creating um, imagery that 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 makes you um, think and dream and aspire and um, you know uh, gets you excited and 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 sort of you know gets your emotions going and you know fashion photography frequently you can't see half the clothes it's not about you know it it's about because when ultimately when you're wearing those clothes it's it's how you feel wearing those clothes and the mood it puts you in so it's not actually about capturing you know the the, the detail of the clothing and stuff so so i like photographers whose work captures a mood much more than captures necessarily an image um and, and you know um sarah moon if you go and have a look at her work it's mm. it's um incredibly um the you know emotive shall we say there's a lot of movement and you know and there's a lot of um there's a lot of escapism in the, in the photograph so so a lot of the things that we've talked about today really i suppose are a form of escapism you know be you know not letting not being bound by the frame of the of the image um you know uh letting yourself feel free to create it's all about escapism for me and and so i suppose i use that in my work and i admire other photographers who do the same Is it escapism that's <laughs> that, okay, every time you sort of you drop these awesome like little knowledge bombs boom, 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 boom. Right. i don't know where i get them from <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> so that yeah i love i have loved talking with you today si i think you know your your photography is, is is beautiful that freedom of expression that you have is is great i think you know i hope the people who have picked up on when they've been looking at your work have gone do you know what this isn't actually it's not technical photography so there's not lots of fancy lighting and stuff it's almost like you've just set a stage that you found you know that you, a, st a stage that you found to have somebody dance with you for you sure know, where you've taken those photographs so thank you so much for your insights site you have a website do, uh, do you have anywhere else because uh, i think you do you do some courses you like to plug or anything like that? no I, well, no I, I probably won't plug my my course I, I you know perhaps i should but um uh, uh, well, the London College of Style. So um, I, 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 you know, I, I shoot for them quite a lot. But um, but really, it's um, uh, simelvershoots.com is my website. And I'll, put, I'll and, um, put the link for you guys in the description. Yeah, my I, Instagram as well at si underscore melba underscore shoots. But yeah. um, you know, Alex, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, to si, I love the channel. Um, really want to contribute something. And I, I think if I could just at my last sort of my, my uh, you know kind of parting few words would be yeah. um you know d don't take uh, uh my word as as gospel for the way you should shoot i think just you know um just allow yourself the freedom to experiment in a way i guess that i have done um to create your own imagery and and you know that way you will get to a great picture there we go another knowledge bomb <laughs> thank you <laughs> right so, si, thank much. you ever so much thank you guys for watching along with si uh you know let me know in the comments what you think you know about size si work is, is it awesome is it pretentious who knows right i'm sure there'll be some discussion but anyway thank you ever so much and if you've enjoyed this one check out this video over here